Hi everyone, this video explains how to set up and play the single player version of Plague Inc. the board game. In the Plague Bot mode, the player, the human, is playing against the Plague Bot, which is a artificial player which plays based on certain rules and the rules that are entirely different to the normal rules that the human player will play against and on the plague bot's turn you will move the plague bot based on the rules i'm going to go through in a second i'm going to assume you know how to set up the standard game and play the standard game but there are some key changes that are made in the setup for plague bot mode once the game is set up for a two-player version of the game you take the card mat and you flip it over to get the single player plague bot mat and that gets put down here. The cards that would normally go on the card mat instead are just placed next to the world board. Plague bot gets all the tokens that are not being used by the human player regardless of what colour they are because Plague Bot never runs out of tokens. So the human player is yellow in this instance, so Plague Bot gets everything else. Any of these colours represent Plague Bot. Finally, Plague Bot gets given three starting countries, as opposed to the one starting country for the human, and Plague Bot does not get any trait cards or an evolution slide. So, let's quickly work out who's starting where. So we've got Plague Bot in France, Argentina, and South Africa. So we'll place a token on each of those. And it doesn't matter which colour we use, they all represent Plague Bot. And the yellow player, which is me in this instance, is starting in the USA. So we'll put that down there. The human player goes first, so we've put the human player's DNA marker on 0 and Plague Bot's DNA marker on 1. And now I think we're ready to start playing the game. So, yellow, the human player goes first and takes their turn as normal. DNA, yellow gets 1 plus bonus DNA, 2 DNA. Country cards, it can choose a country. None of these are very good. Let's take a random one. No oh dear, that's also bad. Egypt, we're going to put that down there. Evolution, yellow, what can we evolve? Let's go for a, we could go plain or we could go sore throat. We'll go for a sore throat, so we'll put that down. Pay two DNA. Infection, we now have three infectivity, so we will put all of that down in the USA. Death, can't roll for anything, so that's the end of the yellow player's turn. Now, it's Plague Bot's turn. Plague Bot does not do the same turn phases of the human player. Instead, it has three phases to its turn. Country placement, auto-evolve, and trait control, as shown on its slide. First, we have the country placement phase. This is when Plague Bot takes a country and it puts it onto the world board. It always draws a country at random from the top of the country deck, in this case China, and puts it down in the correct continent zone. If it draws a country card which can't fit in the world board because this country, the continent space is full, then it discards the card and moves on to the next step. If no cards are left in the country deck, but there are cards that are face up, then it chooses the largest face-up country card. If there are no country cards that are face-up either, then it ignores the step and moves on to the next step. Largest country card is defined as having the most city spaces on it, and if there's a tie with city spaces, then you can look at the population to see which is largest, and that's the second number along on that little bar on the top here. So, country phase. Take a country at random from the top of the pile, put it on the board. Now, we have the auto-evolve phase. This is when the plague bot evolves its disease and gets given a new trait card. When there are no trait cards here at all, we simply draw a trait card from the top of the trait pile and put it on the leftmost space. 
each turn as we add new trait cards we move the existing traits over until eventually they're discarded but as the moment start of the game there are no trait cards already there so we just put it on the leftmost space finally we move on to the trait control phase this is when plaguebot looks at the trait cards that it's evolved because each trait triggers a specific action from the plague bot and those actions are shown at the bottom of the plague bot slide trait cards can have one or more traits on them and we process each trait on the slide in order starting with the top left trait now in this instance at the start of the game there's only one trait card on here and it only has one trait infectivity and infectivity means place a token in every climate suitable connected country to work out the rules about climate suitable and connected, we use the same rules as the normal game, and we look at the cards on the Plaguebot mat to see if it has heat resistance or cold resistance or airborne or waterborne. However, at the start of the game, it only has this one trait here, infectivity, so we place one token in every climate suitable connected country. Remember, colour doesn't matter because we've got all these different colours. So South Africa, it's connected to because it's already there. France and Argentina. However, it can't reach any other country at this phase. Now, we'll talk more about what the other traits do as we go through this playthrough. And sometimes these traits won't be able to trigger a certain action. And in that case, the play bot stuck. But we'll talk more about that as well in a bit. So we've processed all the traits. That's the end of the trait control phase now. So now it goes back to being the human player's turn. So, we'll play the human player's turn quite quickly. Now it's Plaguebot's turn again. Plaguebot draws a country at random. Nigeria, Africa heavy game here. Next, it auto-evolves. So we do have a trait card on our mat now. So the existing card moves over one space. And then we draw a new card from the trait deck. And put that there. Now it's the trait control phase again, and we now have two traits to process. We start with the top leftmost trait, which in this case is heat resistance, and then move down and right. Heat resistance means place a token in every hot connected country. So first we do that. Plaguebot is in Africa, so it's connected to every country in Africa, and we have two hot countries there. So we place a token in each one. There are no more connected hot countries, so that's the end of the heat resistance trait. And now we process the infectivity trait, which is place a token in every climate suitable connected country. Because we now have heat resistance on the slide, heat resistance means we can infect, we are now can, um, we are climate suitable in hot countries. So now we place a token on every country that Plaguebot is connected and climate resistant to, so that means putting a second token down in those hot countries there. And we can see Plaguebot's really beginning to spread at this point, and this is how it starts getting difficult. And that's the end of Plaguebot's turn. Now the human turn again. Human gets one, two, three, plus one, four. I think I moved that back last time. No, I didn't. So, one, two, three, four. Now, country phase. We will take another country card, Ukraine and Europe. Evolution. I think we need to try and save up for heat resistance, so we're not going to spend anything this turn. Infectivity. We still have three infectivity. So, let's take control of Morocco. Get one token in France, and let's put another token down in China. And we can now try and kill Morocco, so let's try and kill it. One, Morocco dies. Now, one very important difference in Plaguebot mode when a country dies. Human rules apply as normal, but for Plaguebot, Plaguebot gets two DNA points for each token it has in the country and it never receives an event card. So as the yellow player gets one plus one, 
So it gets two DNA points and an event card. Move that down there. Plaguebot only has one token. It gets two DNA points and its token back because and no event card. And the country is kept as normal by the human player for score bonuses at the end of the game. Now, it's the plague bot player's turn again. We draw a country at random. Philippines. Now, we go to auto-evolve. So first, we move all of the existing cards one space over. And then we draw a new card and put it on the far left space, lethality. Now, we do trait control. Lethality means you place a token in every climate suitable connected country that Plaguebot does not already infect. So if it can reach a country and it's climate suitable but it doesn't have a token in it, you put a token in it. Then you kill one fully infected Plaguebot controlled country. If there are multiple countries that you could kill, then you pick the largest country based on city size and then population, as I said before. So, lethality. Can Plaguebot infect any country which it doesn't already infect? No. Can Plaguebot kill any country? Does it have any full country? No, it doesn't. So in this instance, the lethality trait doesn't do anything. That's okay. If it couldn't do any trait at all, it would be stuck, but it is going to be able to do some. So we just ignore the lethality trait and move on to the next one. Heat resistance. We place one token in each hot connected country. Then we have the infectivity again. We put one token in every climate suitable country. And you can see now that next turn, that lethality is going to become pretty scary. It doesn't have cold resistance, so we can't put one in Ukraine. And that's the end of the Plague Bot's turn this turn. Human turn, DNA, so now it's the Plague Bot's turn. We draw a country at random for country placement. Brazil, an idea. Auto evolve, we move all of these over one, and we draw another one. I'm really hoping, ah, I'm hoping it wasn't going to be a travel one. So now all of the spaces are full, so Plaguebot's pretty powerful at this point. And now we do trait control, starting with Waterborne. Waterborne means we put a token in every climate suitable connected country with a seaport. So that means one in Brazil, one in Egypt, oh no, one in the Philippines, oh this is disastrous, one in China, and one in the USA. Now we do lethality. We try to, all the countries that it can reach already have a token. So now we try to kill the biggest country, which is a, there's a tie between these three. And I think we will go for France, as that has the largest population. So France dies. Plague what has four tokens in it. It gets two points per token, so it gets eight points from that, which takes it up to 11. And the human player has one token, and it gets one point for it. Tokens are returned. And the human player gets an event card, but not the AI player. And Plaguebot keeps the dead country card for later, for score bonuses at the end. Now we do the heat resistance phase, or we do the heat resistance trait rather, so now it can infect Brazil and Nigeria, Egypt's full, and then we have normal infectivity, so we place one on every suitable country, and Plaguebot is running rampant here, I have done a bad job of containing it at this point, and things are not looking good for me. So that's the end of the Plaguebot's turn this turn. We'll do the human, go give the human one more turn maybe. So human gets. And now it's the plague bot's turn again. Country placement, draw a country at random, Cuba, North America. Now we auto evolve. Now we, our cards are full here. So first we discard the country on the furthest right space and then we move all of them over to make a new free space. 
and we take one at random. Confusion, right, that is also pretty bad. So here we have two traits, and both of those traits will get processed in the trait control phase. So, airborne means place a token in every climate-suitable connected country with an airport. So, which ones have got an airport? Cuba does, let's put one there. Brazil is climate suitable and it has an airport, so one in Brazil, and that's it. Next we have cold resistance, which means place a token in every cold connected country. So we are connected to Greenland, Norway, because we have boats, we're connected to there. And one important point to make here is that the connected rules are recalculated each time a trait is processed. So, although we are now in Norway, we don't get to automatically put one in Ukraine just because it has cold, because when we started processing the cold resistance trait, we weren't connected to Ukraine. So we put one in Norway, but we can't put one in Ukraine from this cold resistance. Once we start processing the next trait, then Plaguebot is connected to Ukraine. There's no more cold countries. Waterborne, which ones have got a port? Brazil has got a port. Norway has got a port, and that's it, the rest of them are full. Lethality, we place a token in every climate suitable connected country that Plaguebot does not already infect. The only one that meets that criteria is Ukraine, because now we are connected to Ukraine. So we put a token in there, and now we need to kill the largest country. The largest country is Nigeria in this instance. So Nigeria's got all, uh, Plaguebot's got all six tokens in Nigeria, so that's another 12 points for it. So things are looking very bad for us. Tokens are returned to Plaguebot, and Plaguebot keeps the card for endgame bonuses at the end. Heat resistance. Put a token in every hot country. It's just Brazil at this point. So at that point, I think I'm going to stop the playthrough you can see how plague bots really beginning to fill everywhere up and i'm going to have to be extremely strategic to try and minimize the options for plague bot to spread and to try and make sure that i prevent it from getting into new continents and by maximizing its use of climates and the aim is that hopefully i'll be able to exploit the traits that it has on its mat in order to find a weakness and or a loophole and and try and shut it down a little bit now, there's a few things that I do want to highlight here. The first is that we've seen that sometimes a trait cannot have an have an, um, trigger any action, i.e. if there's no airports on the world board and you have airborne. It's okay for a trait not to do anything. However, if a plague bot can't do any action on its slide, i.e. all of them don't do anything, maybe we had... Maybe they're all airborne traits and we don't have any airports. If it can't do any action, then Plaguebot is considered to be stuck. If Plaguebot is stuck, then it does the following. First, it draws and places another country. And this time, it automatically places a token on it. If there are no countries left for it to take, the game ends, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Once we've drawn a country card and placed a token on it, we then try to process our traits again. Now, these traits were obviously fine, but if we pretend that these traits aren't any good and that Plaguebot is still stuck, then Plaguebot takes all of its trait cards and replaces them with new ones. So, if, and then it would end its turn. So if Plaguebot can't process its actions, it draws a country card, puts a token on it, tries to process the actions again. If it still can't process any actions, it discards all its cards and replaces them with new ones, and then ends its turn. Now let's quickly look at the game end. There's no sudden death mode in single player. Instead, the game can end in two ways. Either Plaguebot is stuck and there are no country cards left. So if it can't do any action and there are no country cards, then immediately kill all full countries controlled by Plaguebot and end the game. 
The other way the game can end is if the human player is eradicated and there are no country cards. So if at the end of their turn, the human player has got no tokens on the world board and the final country card has been placed or discarded, then the game ends. So two ways for the game to end, either plague bot stuck or the humans eradicated. And if the plague bot is stuck, you kill all of the countries before ending the game that belong to plague bot. We then calculate final scores. Plague bot doesn't score any points for the cards on its plague bot mat. So all of these are ignored. Human player scores as normal, so you add the points on onto the score. And then you look to do the end game bonuses. And end game bonuses work as normal. You look at the dead, car dead countries that each player has killed, but plague bots gets twice as much of the bonus depending on the point. So if plague bot were to get the lucky escape, instead of getting four points, it would get eight points. So all bonuses are doubled for plague bot. And that's how you play the single player version of Plague Inc. the board game.